Oh, when a boy a Porsche. This is a new Porsche 911. But there is just a small, teeny tiny problem. I don't have enough money. Shocking. So obviously I'm not buying the car like now, now. But you see, as someone who has this tremendous ego about his mathematical abilities, I, when it comes to finance, hence the Instagram bio. Copyright pending, by the way. But there is this problem that I have. You know, ever since I've watched Three Idiots, which is, by the way, this movie. Ever since I've watched that movie, there is this character in this movie called Suhas. He is an engineer who did an MBA and then went ahead and worked in a bank. So ever since that movie, I have this very strong notion about engineers turned MBAs. I don't know why, I just have it. So clearly, I need financial help. And given the absolute disdain that I have for engineer turned MBAs, I'm not left with a lot of options. But I do have an exception case. My father. Hey, Vsauce. So, before I begin this video, I need to give you a disclaimer. I need to clear this out that as much as I want to believe that money is not very important, I understand that I have to be in a certain privileged position to be even able to think that way. So this video is in no way intended to undermine anybody. I am blessed to be in this position and everything that I say is a very, very personal opinion and should not be taken, I repeat, should not be taken as financial advice. Okay. Let's get on with the video. I don't know if you remember, but a month ago, we talked about a car that I wanted to buy. Not right now, but like in 15, 20 years. And the car costs about 200,000 euros. And right now I have three euros in my account. First of all, I want to know if it is possible to buy that car in the future with that large of a sum. Secondly, if it is possible, then what are the things that I can do? that I can start doing right now that will help me buy the car. 200,000 in 15 years. So what you have to first start understanding that what is your current income level and what will be your expected income level you know, every five years from now. Even though this sum looks very, very high, you know, when we are looking from today's perspective, I talk about 15 years, it means it's a 120, 180 months. If you save uh, 1,000, then you make around 180,000. And then if you add some amount of interest on that, it automatically makes to 200,000 straight away. But the question is that right now, you can't save 1,000 euro. Absolutely not. Let's say if your, if your income goes to 5,000 euro, let's say five years down the line. So it means out of that 5,000 euro, I believe you can easily save 1,000 euro. After another five years, let's say if it become 10,000, then easily you can save around 2,000, 2,500 euro. So it is not necessary to start from the day one, 1,000 euro. And the important fact is that you should remember in the from the mathematics, that is a compounding effect. Let's say instead of 1,000 euro, now you start saving 500 or let's say 300 euro a month. So the point I'm saying that if you apply the compounding factor, it is expected that even if you start saving 300 euro now, and then gradually you start raising it to as your salary increases, 200,000, easily you can achieve over 15 years. Once you have higher income, you have higher incentive, I would say. And the reason I'm not saving anything right now is because I'm not very good at savings at all. The money comes in and then I spend it as soon as it comes in. Someone with this mentality obviously does not have a lot of self-control when it comes to expenses. He needs a little more incentive than just being relying on the fact that, okay, so my monthly salary will increase and then I'll save more because I'm, I have like more options to buy now or more options to spend my money on. Is there anything like that, especially for long-term investments that even if I put in very small amounts, very, very small amounts, like 300 euros throughout my, my 20 years or 15 years, is there anything which can help me get up to that 200,000 mark? Because right now, if I'm only investing 300 euros for 20 years, I'll get somewhere around 80,000, 81,000 euros. You're absolutely right that as your income increases, your appetite for spending also increases. And not because that, you know, you have a want of spending it, but also because you have a larger need also. Because then you grow, uh, your other needs increases, you know, you'll be, you'll be getting married, your family needs increases. 
so all those obligations comes in but the advantage with you is that the 15 years is a substantially long period and clearly you are in a position where you can take a long term risk and see risk and reward goes hand in hand if you are willing to take more risk it is expected that the reward will be higher for your age the best instrument would be to have exposure into the equity market because the equity market is for a long term if you do the analysis over the last 15 years 20 years of historical data you will observe that the return has been 10% plus there is a thumb rule called rule of 72 so it means that if your return is 10%, you divide 72 by those returns. So that's 10%. So it means 7.2 years, your income becomes double. Now you understand the effect that if you are saving 500 now in this month, then after 7 and 2 years from now, this 500 will become 1000. And then again, after 7 and a half years, that will become 2000. So in 15 years, this 500 becomes 2000. Now the question is that should you expose directly to the equity market or there is an alternate route of mutual fund. So you can start with the mutual fund because mutual fund gives you the advantage that you don't have to you know keep analyzing their stocks. There is an expert asset manager who manages the entire portfolio of the mutual fund. Mutual fund is also basically exposing in the stock market itself. You have the advantage of getting the equity markets exposure without directly getting involved yourself. So the mutual fund can be a good way of entering into the stock market. Though I personally believe that in your age, if you are willing and, and, and if someone has a good mathematical skill, they can do some analysis and they can pick up four and five, you know, uh, reliable stocks and see that if they have a long term uh, vision. So let's, uh, as an example, I give you, suppose if you invest in the US market, then Tesla could be one stock, such a stock, which has a long term plan because it is going for electric vehicles, which is the long term requirement. Similarly, suppose you come to India and if you in, want to invest in India, then the Larson and Tubro, the Reliance, some five, six companies which you can put into your portfolio yourself also. Because when you do yourself, then you are reducing your uh, expenses which you are paying to the mutual fund agencies as well. Yes, only caveat is that in the stock market, there could be a possibility that when you are about to reach your goal, at that point of time, there is some black swan event. And then suddenly the money which was you are seeing that it was around 180,000 or 200,000, suddenly it has come down to 150,000. And it will not become zero, but then it will be notionally it will get reduced. So those risks would be there. Also, uh, something like a Tesla, which goes up and down by how its owner Elon Musk tweets, and it, it, it seems very volatile. So you're telling me that in the long run, that, that erratic behavior almost linearizes or has a more smoother curve to it, rather than being so up and down all the time? See, in the short term, the Tesla seems to be much more volatile. So obviously, if you're looking at two months time, three months time, it looks very volatile. But if you analyze the stock movement of Tesla's for last you know, few years, you will see that it has an upward trend. So, so what, what is important is to see that whether the trend line is upward or it is going the downward. And you will see most of the company's stock, if the company's fundamentals are very strong or their uh, purpose of business, purpose of doing the business is very strong very sustainable then those companies are doing a very good returns in the long term one more point you know the advantage with investment in the stock market is that you are entitled to get the dividend so besides the daily you know stock price which you are seeing on the stock exchange every year if these companies are fundamentally strong are profitable then they give dividend now you have the option whether you can in reinvest that money and buy the certain percentage or certain portion of the stock of the same company or you can invest that money somewhere else so apart from uh, like creating your own portfolio with stocks or uh, investing in a mutual fund there are also options which I was uh, looking into, which was something like a, a fixed deposit. And then there was also this uh, 
index funds. So fixed deposit means, as the name suggests that this is a deposit which has been deposited for a fixed tenure at a fixed rate of interest. So it means there is a contract between bank and the customer where the bank has taken money from you and in turn he has, uh, you know, bank has agreed to pay back you that money with certain interest at the end of the certain year. Since there is a certainty that you receive the money back, obviously your expectation return would be less compared to the stock market where the risk is huge. Now coming to the index fund. So index fund, to my best knowledge, it is also a kind of a mutual fund only. Like you have in, in, in India, you have uh, Nifty 50. So it means that the top 50 companies which are listed on the uh, National Stock Exchange that has been created into an index fund. And when you are buying into that index fund, basically you are buying some amount of the stocks in all these 50 companies. So it's also a variant of the mutual fund to, uh, to my knowledge, and I would rate that. And so this is a, again a safe uh, way of entering into the stock market. So according to you, the highest reward also accompanied by risk is stock portfolio that you've created for yourself. And then it comes uh, mutual funds and then there is fixed deposits uh, in that order itself, right? As young earners, young professionals who are starting out into investment, uh, people of my age and little younger as well, what are some of the pitfalls that you should be aware of when you're uh, starting to invest? Pitfalls. I think the pitfall is that you should not get uh, attracted to impulse shopping. So that is the time when you should be checking your adrenaline. That is the time when you should be, uh, you know, uh, controlling your impulse. That is something very, very important. Uh, and, and, and that's where it is important that you should, you know, as you have a goal, one should always fix a goal, a long-term goal, not, not, you know, one year, two year goals, because then you'll not be able to meet that goal financially and then you'll get frustrated and then you lose interest in savings also. So saving should be started right from the day one when you start earning your first check and it should be linked with a goal. Finance seems to be a very practically, uh, rationally thought of thing. Uh, but I have a feeling that even though you might have gone ahead very practically and rationally with your finances, there might have been some things which you might have regretted down the line. That It might have seemed very practical decision at that point of time. But 10 years down the line, five years down the line, it doesn't seem that good of a decision. When I started uh, in 1991, uh, I was drawing a salary of 2,200 rupees a month. So it's the same salary that I have, just different currency. Yes, but then, then the exchange rate uh, makes a hell lot of difference, <laughs> right? So 2,200 rupees and uh, at that point of time, my goal was that if I can, in, if I can save 50,000 rupees, you know, that would be something which would be fantastic for my life. But things changed. I was not able to save practically anything except for the fact that from the day one, we were saving in some kind of an uh, instrument. We call it the PPF, the Public Provident Fund. You know, so where you can invest 100 rupees, 200 rupees a month. I got married at that point of time. Then we have, you came in. So all, all the obligations started coming in. So we were not able to uh, save as we have decided. We had a plan that we could have a horse. That is something very, very important for us. And then we should have followed by a vehicle. So these, was, these were our ways of planning for the life. Now probably the things have changed. And, and I also believe that in today's time, uh, it is not a very good investment to invest in the uh, real estate uh, right now you can probably defer it for later and you can enjoy staying in uh, rented accommodations but then you can save for the uh, larger goal larger purpose for the later uh, life that actually turned out better than i imagined to be honest surprisingly I, I hope that this didn't just come out as a big flex or something because that really was not my intention. And although I still maintain that this is not financial advice, I just wanted to make this video for people like me who don't know a lot about money 
and have only recently started earning, I hope that I, I can at least pique their interest a little bit towards finance and towards the power of just saving money in general. I mean, obviously you don't have to buy a Porsche. You, you don't have to buy a car. You don't have to buy anything at all. I don't think anybody would mind to have a solution for having a guaranteed amount at the end of a certain amount of years by putting in not a lot of effort and not sacrificing a lot. I think it's a it's something that we can all make use of. I think it's something that we can all try and understand a little bit better. And that is what the purpose of this video was. Just peaking a little bit of your interest towards finance so that you can explore a lot more options than what I really discussed with my father in this video. Because frankly, if, if I literally three euros in my account can even think about having a Porsche, uh, at the end of even 10 years, 15 years, I think that's that's saying a lot. If I can do it, then I think most, most I, I'm pretty sure everybody else can do it. But if you are interested in a car, specifically my car that I was talking about in this video, uh, I have put up a configuration of that car in the description box below. You can go ahead and just check it out. If you're interested in my content, if you like what you saw, there are some other videos that I have linked below that should also pop up at the end of the video, I guess. I think that's how YouTube works, right? Uh, <laughs> why am I talking like an old man? All right, I'll see you in the next video. Mummy, ko bula zara. Mummy, ko bula. Wo camera ko hello. Camera bolne, camera bolne. Hello, hi. अरे इधर क्यों देख रही हूँ? उधर देख के बोलो ना hello. Hi everyone. अब आप भी कोई फाइनेंशियल टिप्स दो क्या बात है पहले बोल के नहीं रखा जो आपको ठीक लगता है मुझे तो यही लगता है कि हाँ मतलब सेविंग जरूर होना चाहिए उसकी कोई ये नहीं है कि क्राइटेरिया कि यू हैव टू सेव बिगर मनी थोड़ा थोड़ा करके सेविंग लेकिन जरूर करना चाहिए इट्स हैबिट में लाना चाहिए और कुछ बोलना है नथिंग नहीं नहीं नथिंग एल्स नेक्स्ट वीडियो में कैसा लगा बहुत अच्छा लगा इट्स वेरी गुड पिताजी पिताजी को भी बोल रहा हूँ अरे थोड़ा और तैयारी पहले बोलता मैं तैयारी करता यार पूरे मैनेजमेंट